We're going to proceed with the 3D scanning, and today uh, in our studio is Kitia, uh, who is going to be 3D scanned. And we are going to use two sensors. Uh, one of the sensors is this Project Eve, um, so which has a, a bit of a weird look because we attach the uh, power supply to its um, um, to its kind of um, how to say <laughs> to it uh, with a with a duct tape um, because otherwise it is creating too much pressure on the uh, on the power connection, and then the other sensor that we are going to use is uh, this one, which is sort of a Kinect, but it's produced by ISOS. Uh, I don't really remember its model number, uh, model name, correctly, but it's uh, let's let's call it the ISOS Depth Scanner. Uh, and we're going to use two different uh, softwares. Uh, one is Arctic uh, Studio, and that that's that's the one that we are going to use for for the Arctic scanner. And then for the um, ASUS uh, 3D scanner, we're going to use a free software that's uh, called Scanact. So let's get going. Um, in order to access Arctic Studio 15, you have to uh, spot this icon on the top left corner of the screen. Double click it. And in order to start scanning, you have to press the scan button. And at this point, you will see that the scanner enters um, infrared mode. So be careful with this one because if it's quite sensitive. Ah, yeah. So when you see the green button on the scanner, that means that it's ready. Uh, and basically, when when it was flickering, if it is flickering, that it means that it entered already the preview mode. And you can activate the preview mode by pressing the play button uh, on the scanner or the preview button on the on the user interface. Uh, before you start scanning, so it's uh, it, it makes sense to check these settings, uh, so these presets. So if you want to capture the texture of the object, then you should uh, select the geometry and texture option. But in this case, uh, as we want to 3D print, uh, we need to select the geometry option only. If you're using targets uh, with your scan, then um, it makes sense to enable this, but we're not going to use that at this time. Um, these uh, checkboxes are fine, so these options are fine, and uh, what we want to do, uh, we also want to enable real-time fusion. It's going to make it uh, make a much cleaner scan and easier to process it afterwards. So what I'm going to do, um, I'm going to press the preview button on the sensor now. So you see it's starting to initialize the sensor, and the first thing that we need to do is we need to point the, the camera, so the sensor, towards the object that we want to scan. You need to find a good um, ground plane, uh, and once the ground plane is found, then the sensor and the software is going to indicate it with this blue grid. Uh, once you see that, you can start scanning by pressing the play button or the record button on the interface. And then carefully move upwards to approximately the area that you want to capture as a scan. So I'm going to capture only the torso. And uh, now you can, uh, so keep, yeah, you can spin around slowly. I think this is enough. I'm gonna stop by pressing the stop button. So um, you see, the scan went fine. There are all these little bits, but uh, so it's, it's, it looks a little bit noisy. But that's because we actually have two objects scanned. So one that is the original scan, and then the real-time fusion part. So if we hide the original scan and show the real-time fusion, we see there's a bit better quality version of. Uh, what we try to achieve. So it's, it's, it's capable of capturing quite a lot of detail. So yeah, as we yesterday were talking, so it's approximately one millimeter. Uh, 
I mean, if, if we are lucky, maybe a little bit more, maybe five millimeter resolution. Um, so the nose maybe is not so successful, but I mean, if you would, if you will 3D print it, then um, probably like all these details are gonna disappear anyways. Um, but luckily, we have a lot of tools available here in inside Ardex Studio that are going to allow us to uh, to erase all the things that we do not need, for example, and also to uh, edit the mesh so that to a quality that is acceptable to us. So I'm gonna first choose the eraser and I'm gonna choose the rectangular selection for the selection mode. Yeah, so I'm gonna choose the rectangular selection uh, as selection mode and I'm going to look at the model uh, from the side and I'm also going to enable the orthogonal view. And what I wanna do I want to delete everything that is uh, below approximately this level over here. In order to do that, uh, I will hit control on the keyboard, hit and hold it, and then drag with the mouse. And then we can hit erase to erase that. With the left button, or no, with the right button, we can zoom in, and then with the left button, we can turn around. And here we can see that there are quite a lot of holes over here. Now, one of the next things that we can try is one of the tools available here. So you see uh, they are listed in an order. So, uh, so it's pretty much the order that you want to also use them uh, in. So first you want to get a little rid of these smaller objects over here and you can specify what is the, the polygon count uh, of the, the yeah, of the small objects that we want to get. So yeah, you see it did remove the smaller ones around. It's really nice. Um, next we want to fill the hole. So let's try it with the default settings first. And this green bar on the bottom of the screen it indicates the progress of the current operation that we are running. Okay, so you see the smaller holes are being filled. Um, there are still some left. Uh, there are some fusion options that's interesting that I'm gonna... Uh, so we can simplify the mesh. Uh, so let's simplify it a little bit. Yep. Um, and let's smooth it a little bit. And I want to use the fix holes uh, dialog to actually try to fix something. So and here we see that this is something that could be fixed. And let's hit apply. No, it's a fix holes. just select all of them and fill them. Nice. Uh, and then we can go back to the tools section and maybe... No, we want to save. So you need to hit apply before you move somewhere else. And then to tools again. Uh, what we could do instead of uh, isotropic remesh is that we could go with fast mesh simplification. Okay, so nothing much changed, but still. Uh, this is okay, okay, we could smooth it a little bit. Yep. That looks much better. Okay, and at this point we are, I think, ready to actually export it. Um, and in order to export, we need to select uh, the one for this fusion scan that we uh, just also edited. And we need to go to File, Export, Meshes. There's several types that you can select as output format. Uh, it's, uh, I would recommend FPL at the, this point. Unless you want to get um, also texture data, uh, then you would need to select the OBG. Um, I'm not sure about PLI. Uh, but FPL is uh, is a format that doesn't support any kind of textures, so it's just going to save um, uh, plane geometry. 
and I'm going to save it here. Oh, yeah, and then you can go to the folder where you saved the match, and you can double check it um, with the 3D viewer on Windows um, or on, on Mac. You could just use Preview to do that. And another way to scan is using Scanact and the uh, and the Asus depth scanner with this one. Um, I think once you find out about it, you just need to go to Asus website and check uh, the cameras in category. Also, uh, make sure that it's connected to the computer. Um, so the connection is still USB 2 because it's quite an old scanner. So you do not necessarily need a USB 3 port. So I'm just going to plug it in a USB 2 connector over here. And um, um, in order to start scanning, you need to open the ScanX application here um, that you can find on the top left part of the desktop. And Scanact is um, is a proprietary software for 3D scanning, but they offer also a free version. Um, so a version that is also installed on this computer here. Uh, and the only limitation is that uh, your scan is just going to be a little bit um, contain less uh, polygons. So there's a limit of polygons that you can have um, when you're saving the file. Um, but if you want uh, higher polygon counts, then we can also purchase the full version, which you can see here at the lab. Uh, when the sensor is connected, then you will see this uh, um, so this uh, kind of a sticker or sort of the information field on the top right part of the screen. So that it's open an I2 sensor, that uh, we have a decent GPU card, uh, GPU accelerator uh, in order to handle it um, and that it's a scanx free version in order to start the scan we need to set up the scene uh, so we are going to scan a body uh, so basically a torso uh, then we can select the bounding box um, so one one times one meters that's that's enough uh, normal aspect ratio uh, and so, so we can specify also the path to where we want our scan to go and we don't we're not going to use any specific config file in order to start scanning we need to press the start button and um, yeah so here on the top right corner you will see the RGB camera input and the depth input so the red color means that it, the objects are closer and then and then orange means that they are a bit uh, farther away and then yellow green and blue blue means that uh, uh, so it's about yeah a few meters away already and black means that the camera cannot detect these areas so we should paint uh, point it at the at the model or the object that we want to scan and uh, and we can specify the delay that we will have before the software is going to start recording so that's very useful when you are operating the camera alone, as in this case. So after hitting record, you will have five seconds of time to get into position and to prepare for the scan. So I'm going to take a position that is a bit above, so from above, so we do not end up having holes on the top of the head. And now, uh, so the model actually can start to turn. So I can give you a good turn slowly and uh, at a constant rate. Okay, I think that this should give us good results. Okay, so here. This looks quite good. Uh, it's just the rotation is a little bit weird. So here you see also, can see all the paths of the camera, how it went. So we did four turns in order to achieve this scan. Some parts could be better, but the main part, so this time we managed to capture the, the head quite well. See there are no, there's just a little hole up here, but when we are going to fill that, then it's just uh, going to be okay. 
So now we can go to the reconstruct tab um, where we can do the fusion of the frames again if we want but I think this is a good uh, enough result already and then we can go over to process tab and make make the model watertight by using the watertight function so here you can select also the resolution uh, I'm gonna go with medium and hit run as you see this little hole on the top of the head has disappeared and now we're doing colorizing and uh, so you can also simplify there's not much to simplify but let's try so we'll fill holes here but we just need to maybe crop and, and move it a little bit so we would like to rotate it around one of the axes I wonder somehow like this. And then something like that. And the processing part. And uh, oh, okay. We didn't do the crop to ground. So that's much better now. And then we can go to share and click on export model, export preview and now uh, see it okay, let's check it out now yeah, that's much better that pretty much concludes the, the basics of 3D scanning uh, so there's also the um, Intel RealSense scanner available, but uh, the flow is not as uh, sophisticated as with the other scanners at the moment. So we're going to skip this and at the moment, but when we'll know more, uh, we'll definitely make a video. Thank you.